the recording. Inshallah, everything goes accordingly with the time. Everyone's doing okay? How's everyone's day been? Alhamdulillah, yeah. Glad it's Friday. Right. Yes, the weekend is here. Yeah, Joe Mubarak. Good. I think everybody's here, right? Was there one person or we're good to go? Okay, just give me maybe a few more seconds. So I'm not gonna be using any slides today. It's literally just gonna be me talking. And um, it would be really nice if you guys have any questions or you wanna share some of your input during the conversation or during me presenting. Uh, so the topic is going to be in regards to harassment that women face worldwide, globally, um, who are niqabis, even women who wear the hijab. Um, are you all familiar that this is something like a serious thing that does happen to Muslimas that are actually modest and dress modestly? You guys can, if you don't want, if you don't feel comfortable, you can leave a message. Do you have access to the messaging? Chat. Yeah, subhanAllah. I feel like um, I am aware, um, but I haven't either experienced it myself and I don't know anybody personally um, that that's happened to. Alhamdulillah. Yeah, I'm sorry you had to experience that. It's a very heavy topic, um, but it's very real and it happens in the West. It happens in Muslim countries. A lot of times, unfortunately, the women, they don't feel that they have the right maybe support system, especially with their own family members or the females or even the males in the family, because they may feel like they're going to get blamed or that they did something wrong or that, you know, because that also does happen as well. Um, so sharing a little bit about this. I've personally had to experience this. And when I say had to, I obviously wasn't looking for it, but um, I almost feel like because it's happened repetitively, I, I feel like it's one of my callings to be like somebody who's willing to um, work with other women who are silenced about it and don't know what to do because it, it's almost very shattering to a woman's dignity and it can affect her self-value. And I'm actually really happy, Ikra, that you did the whole love and everything because it goes really well with what I'm talking about because it's a very heavy topic. Um, and a lot of people shy away from even discussing this or talking about it. Um, in Egypt, uh, it's actually been documented that 99.9, .9, I could be a little off with the 0.9 part, but it is 99% where women have been harassed in some form at least once in their life it's been documented that it's happened repetitively about 70 to 80 percent but at least once in their life it's happened so this is obviously not only just like um like um cultured people when i say by that like, like a muslim or a, a christian it can it's it's happened with in the west too so um, with that being said, there's different types of harassment. You guys are all aware of this, of course, right? There's sexual harassment, there's verbal harassment. Which, which, do, you, which do you guys think is the highest percentage that women face? Does anyone feel comfortable to share? Verbal. Katina, 80% for which one, dear? Do you think it's verbal or it's more sexual? Mm-hmm. 
Hmm. Anybody else want to share what they think? Okay, so here's the thing. Um, it's a little questionable in regards to, I've done research, like for example, in countries in Pakistan or even the UK and America and certain areas of Europe, it's difficult to be able to really trust the numbers and how they go about it because Pakistan has more of a population than the entire Middle East. So the numbers is, is like, how do you really equivalent, you know, like, add the numbers together in a percentage. But a lot of times it's more than just a verbal. The verbal will be the, um, it, I from my research, I found that the verbal is more happening in the West because it's like the reasons behind why a person harasses someone, a female like who wears a niqab, is obviously it's it's not about lust or desire it's more about attaining power over the woman so there have been cases where family members or um other people even like strangers where a woman would be walking in a market and like men would be physically groping a woman and she's wearing head to toe and her hands are covered so I, it, it is a serious issue where, I mean, it is a calling of someone having an illness because a normal human individual wouldn't be doing something like this. But it also does play where the, you know, unfortunately the porn industry is really playing with people's minds. So it's like they, they just feel like women is, is more of, um, whether she's covered or not, she's more of a physical object. You know what I'm saying? So as we know in the Quran, it's been said that Allah sees women as very high value with a high dignity um, and self-worth. And in Islam, a woman's worth is by far a lot higher than the previous religions. But it almost seems like the female, sometimes she can forget her voice when she her upbringing or her environment isn't very supportive of her so i want to ask you guys for example if i was coming to you and telling you okay i ha i'm going through this and i don't have anybody supporting me what do you feel or think would be a good advice to give to someone such as myself who doesn't have maybe the right support team or system what would you tell me to do what would you think is a good thing to tell a woman? What kind of professional? like a therapist. Right, of course. Okay, great. Yes, it's very important that the woman um, receive support um, from a woman in particular. And go directly to the police it would be beneficial if the police officer if she feels comfortable more with a woman uh being present like a, pol a woman police officer or having the therapist go with her if that is a possibility if she doesn't have any sisters or family supporting her um because according to the law it doesn't matter what country also this is a violation and the person should be charged immediately um, it is not okay for any woman to go through any verbal or any type of sexual attack or abuse, because if a woman is silenced, because I found that even as a witness, I, I, I witnessed it in Jordan because I lived in Jordan for six months. Um, a lot of women that I met that experienced similar things, they were 
told to shush by their own friends and family members, which were women. So, I mean, that's, that's very scary. And, and they were almost taught that it's, it's their fault, but they weren't even, you know, so definitely it's very important to do that because if a, if a person is not held accountable, um, then they're just going to keep doing it over and over and over again. They're never going to learn a lesson. And then on top of that, what does that really teach the, the female who experienced the harassment? It just teaches her to kind of um, suppress the violation and um, just her voice. And it, it affects the nervous system. It affects her connection to Allah. Hopefully it would strengthen her connection to Allah but um, a woman, you know, and it can affect her many years down the road because it affects relationships that she can have, whether she's married or not, or even has kids. And what would happen is um, sometimes trauma, it can take five to 10 years for it to hit the person uh, if, it's, if it's not diagnosed immediately. And um, that unf we don't want it to go to the road where the, the person would be giving herself to drugs or any type of self-abuse or going the wrong direction in general. Does anyone have any questions about anything that I'm saying? I'd like for you guys to get engaged a little bit here. You can turn your mics on. No questions. Anyone else? It's a heavy topic, I know. <laughs> so, of course, wearing a hijab and a niqab, it, it's supposed to protect us. This is what it's supposed to do. And it does. I mean, me, myself, it doesn't matter. I feel a lot more protected where, when I'm wearing a full niqab. Um, I have an Instagram account and I will ask you ladies to check it out if you ever get the chance and observe majority of the people that leave comments are men. And I always keep repeatedly telling them because when I had started my Instagram account, I was mentioning that I'm going to be doing coaching for Muslimas, Muslim women, only women, no men. And as I said that more men kept starting to follow me. And there's only so much blocking I can do when they keep coming and coming. And I mean, nothing bad has happened or anything, but at the same time, there is like a curiosity of the opposite sex of a woman, especially if she's a revert, you know what I'm saying? So there has been um, times where I've just worn a niqab on my posts because I'm, I'm also experimenting with the psychology of the people and how they would react and so on and so forth when I go from wearing a niqab and a hijab. And a lot of times the, the responses I get between the two is if you don't cover your face or if you don't cover like completely, um, you're going to experience some form of harassment. That's basically the message that they're delivering. But I mean, with all, with all due respect, there shouldn't be any type of harassment at all it's also the role of the man to lower his gaze and not communicate with the women so i mean there is a give and take here sure as women we have a certain responsibility to stay modest and humble in our behavior and our character and not to engage too much and stay professional especially because i'm going to be doing the coaching right now but i've chosen to stay particularly away from coaching men because i don't want it to be too messy and th there's no need of additional stuff um but it is important to be firm because i almost feel like um as women there may be times where you may attract or have someone come to you and they may tell you okay you know i'm going through sexual harassment or i'm being harassed can you help me i need you and it's important for us Muslimas to be able to be there for these girls or anybody really who is experiencing such a thing. And a lot of times women don't know how to go about it other than, you know, saying, okay, well, you know, try to connect with your family or 
get help or talk to Allah or something, but it's a lot more deeper than that. Do you guys, do you get what I mean? Because it affects so much um, of a woman's worth. It's, it's like very rooted in her worth that it can totally destroy. Or, I mean, if someone is there for them, then it can totally repair and empower the woman in a very positive, loving way, as Ikra was saying in, in her presentation. Uh, what do you girls think about all this? Did you um, start wearing niqab right away or was it a process? Like, did you have to build up to wearing it? So um, I was actually wanting to wear a niqab before I actually submitted to Islam. So it was something that I was definitely building up to, but I do live in a Christian country. Like I'm a citizen of Armenia, it's predominantly Christian. Um, so they're not used to seeing a woman in a niqab. Hijab is not a problem, but the way I'm doing it is for it, for um, them to kind of get used to me, I'm intentionally posting like my videos and my posts and tagging my area because I know they're going to see me. Um, so I'm trying to slowly open them up to it because they're not, they're just not used to seeing women in a niqab. Uh, but when I went to Jordan, it was the very first thing I did before I was wearing a hijab. I was wearing a niqab there. So for me, it's it's a lot easier. The only thing is maybe in the heat, it's a little difficult to breathe. That's all. I know. I've been curious. Like I've been wanting to wear, I'm, I will already wear hijab. It was like one of the easiest things when I converted Mm -hmm. And I have been wanting to wear niqab, but I, I live in New York, which I don't, I feel like the West, it really depends on where you go. Of course. You know, I mean, there's some ignorant people here that, they, I mean, they will physically attack you as well, you know, but um, yeah, it's something I have been thinking about, but I think that is one of my concerns. You know, if you get in front of the wrong person, it could really be, you know, a catastrophe. So. Um, one of the important things to do is definitely don't ever walk out of the house without a, your camera, like your phone, always record everything. Um, it's so important that when, when you're anything at all, because when you have it documented, that's it, right? 80% of the time, the attacker, it prevents the person from attacking, but if, if that person is still going to attack you, then even better, you got it recorded. I know. Thank you for sharing your experience, though. I'm like, oh, I want to wear it. So. <laughs> I mean, don't get me wrong. It's not like every single person is going to come up to you and start harassing you or something just because you're wearing a niqab. But it's also very good to be um factual about certain things that there are things that are possible you know what I mean practical as well and that if something does happen kind of not being afraid to you know speak up and defend yourself and know it's it's kind of like what any woman is going to experience even if she's wearing a, a tank top and shorts right if she's being harassed it's still wrong but ultimately the reasons why even if you're being verbally abused by wearing a, a niqab why are they doing it it's several things ignorance power over the person and um it's a disorder anybody else yeah, i wanted to ask um what do you think of niqab whilst wearing niqab whilst working in a workplace because i've had people tell me that Niqab creates communication issues. For your work in general, or do you mean for coaching? Uh, for work in general. I guess it depends on the place you work. Their rules and their... Do you get what I'm saying? What are their rules? What are their policies? Yeah. But do you think that the workplace could... Allow niqab. 
Well, you know, when it comes to religion, it should be honored and respected regardless, right? But I mean, yes, there are people that will demand. There was a woman in Canada, in Toronto, I can't remember the year, but she experienced some form of harassment. And so when she went to court, she was wearing a full kneecap and they were ready to press charges on the person. But they said, you have to take off your kneecap because we cannot identify you. And she wasn't willing to do it. So that's why it started causing a little bit of chaos. But then at the same time, she was just very persistent about it. And then she still ended up winning the case. So it, it really depends on your um, self-empowerment, your voice, what you truly believe. Um, there's, there's ways on how to get it to work for you. But I mean, also, you don't want to go against something if you're not ready for it. You know what I mean? Like if the whole team is going to go against you until you prove something. Um, but it also depends on the type of work. This is what I feel. Some people are afraid of who is under it. Some people do not trust a person who hides himself. Usually non-Muslims who are ignorant and racist, yes, have this fear. But I know a lot of Muslims who do not agree with niqabs and niqabis because of bad situations that have happened where they no longer have trust in niqabis. Okay, so then basically you are saying that a lot of women have experienced some form of harassment because why are they associating the bad, you know, it's a bad situation. Why are they associating niqab as not protecting? Is this correct? They have gone through some form of a negative situation. Where does the majority of you guys live? Majority of you are in the UK? I know Hannah's in the, the States. Katina, you're in the US. Yeah, your accent. <laughs> Forgive me. <laughs> I know. <laughs> <laughs> Forgive me. You did say that too, where you are. I'm sorry. Yeah, UK. I think the I think Miriam and Nahid are also in the UK, if I'm not mistaken. But Hannah, in the are these niqabis? Are they all in in California? No, as in some niqabis hide under a niqab and do dirty work. Uh, okay, now he's in the U.S. Yeah, you know, th th that's the thing too, though, because this type of, um, this topic is very deep, it can go very deep, and it can go in many directions, definitely. And it does trigger psychologically, many different people's perspectives and fears. That is for sure. Has anybody here ever worn a niqab? Like regularly wear a niqab when they go out? No. Okay. Well, I hope it doesn't, I'm not trying to instill any fear that this is what every single woman goes through, but so you have Ikra. Oh, okay. Um, would you feel comfortable sharing a little bit of anything? It could be even a positive, something that made you feel more comfortable by wearing it. Where were you wearing it? Walking down the street, going grocery store, yeah, so um, I started a couple months ago, I think maybe March, and when I first wore it, um, I wear it just out in public, so whether that be going to the park, grocery shopping, um, when I'm walking through the city centres, and, um, and obviously because I go uni as well, so there was one time where I did wear it to uni, and because I work in the health sector, mm. um. They don't allow it in that. 
So instead I wore masks. So whenever I, I'm in uni, I wear a mask instead. Uh, but as soon as I basically get out of the uni campus area, uh, I'd put the guard back on. Uh, so I'd be walking through city centre, going on trains uh, and such. Um, and Alhamdulillah, nothing's happened to me. Um, Alhamdulillah. and um, mm. maybe at first I might have felt like people were looking, but I, I don't know if that was more of a psychological kind of thing, um, because maybe I was nervous to wear it and so I was kind of paying more attention to the people. Uh, so I'm not sure if people were actually looking or if it was just my kind of, um, my thoughts. Um, and when I first put it on, I would say I felt a lot more confident, kind of gave me a confident boost. Uh, which I kind of wasn't expecting. Um, and then once I also remember that once I was walking through the city centre and usually nobody approaches me, but one time a Muslim woman, a uh, hijabi, um, she came up to me and she actually started talking to me, um, which I didn't really expect. But like, Alhamdulillah, that was good. Okay, it was more of a positive experience. That's really awesome. Because when you feel more, uh, when you get the positive experiences in the beginning, it totally gives you more confidence to keep doing it. But for your work, did you ask? Did you ask them about it? Or they were just like, no? Um, I didn't exactly ask. Okay. Right. Okay, so you're in, when you go to France, yes, it's a little bit, right, of course. Um, but yeah, Ikra, it's very true uh, with the confidence. I personally, with myself too, I'm a lot more confident. I don't feel like I need to, yeah, I just, it's, the thing is though, there are people out there that they find it more sexy when a woman is covered. It's so weird but the things i've i've heard from people like their input they find it attractive there are people out there they find these things attractive when a woman is only showing her eyes it leaves more mystery with this today's society everything is exposed you know what i'm saying so there are people out there and it's not even just men it's women too there's women who 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 harass other women it's unfortunately whether they're muslim or not it's it's not always a supportive system for sure but um there was one girl I was coaching and she's in the UK as well she, London in particular she told me she was walking one day and it was a rainy day and this car just drove up quickly up to her and and the, all the water from the rain like splashed on her face or her her kneecap and then he reversed the car and he opened the window and he spat on her So, I mean, the, the, that's, this is horrifying, absolutely horrifying to hear and know that these things do happen, but, um, yes, it's happening. <laughs> but I mean, now with Islam growing rapidly, you know, let's just hope that people kind of turn their, let go of these old perspectives of things that just because a woman is covering her face or wearing a hijab, because even women with co that cover their hair, they can face these things too. Um, yeah, times are slowly changing, but inshallah for the better, at least one day soon. Anything else that you guys want me to, or you have anything to tell me or ask a question? Was it too heavy? Can you guys leave me a, a number from one to 10 if this was too heavy of a topic? I think we have about, yeah, we still have some time. Five, Katina? Yeah, it was good, thank you. Okay, um, you're welcome, thank you. I just appreciate you two also answering like your experience as well. So, and just listening to the other women and stuff that's been helpful as well. So thank you for this. Anytime, anytime. 
I would suggest um, give it, try it once, practice at home wearing a kneecap, go out maybe for a walk, a short walk, see how you feel. If it's if you don't feel comfortable enough, go back home and you know what I mean? Like slowly bring it out. I like I like that idea. Yeah, thank you. No problem. Anybody else? How you guys, what do you guys think? It's too heavy of a topic. If you guys are not responding, it means it's too heavy. Come on, you gotta let me know. <laughs> Hannah, Miriam. Is, is, 10, is 10 being heavy and one being not heavy? Yes, correct. Okay. I would say, uh, I'd give it a seven or eight. Yeah, it is. It's heavy. It's a heavy topic. Anyone else? No? The most important thing is our connection to Allah and definitely having the love, love for ourselves and our sisters and brothers in Islam and just human beings. Um, love can cure all diseases and fears of everything in life, forgiveness, astaghfirullah and everything. Um, But it's also very important to talk about the dark side of things too, because if we keep hiding and pushing things, it gets worse, you know? And then the perpetrators, they feel like they can keep doing it. Exactly, you got that, Hannah, exactly. Okay, so I think that's pretty much all. I just wanted to discuss a little bit about this. If you feel that there could be any other form of uh, ways to support women or even research about this, whether it's in your own country, in your own um, continent, in your own city, that would be really good, not just for you, but for the women that you may attract or even want to help, or you never know, anything's possible. And it, the topic is about niqabis, but it could be on women in hijabs too. It's, it doesn't have to be fully limited. So inshallah, this was helpful. Thank you so much, everybody, for being here and being part of this with me. Um, Jazakallah khair. Thank you.